morning, everyone. Welcome to Christ Church of Oropair on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. First uh, time we're celebrating ordinary time with green vestments. And also today, because uh, it's the first Sunday of the month, we're using the uh, traditional language service, uh, which is like the Book of Common Prayer service. Uh, that's our, our custom on the first Sunday of the month. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <laughs> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. first reading is taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from a skin disease. Now the Amorians Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria. 
Samaria. He would cure him of his skin disease. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent it to you, my servant. When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his skin disease. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life? that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his skin disease. Just look and see how he's trying to pick up quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots, and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure this skin disease. Are not Abana and Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and said, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he has said to you was, Wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. This is the word of the Lord.
Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow in the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I'm writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make good showing in the flesh who try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. This is the word of the Lord. Whatever house you enter first, say, Peace to this house. And if 
anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Out 
like lambs in the midst of wolves. Really encouraging words for these novice missionaries. And finally, he tells that if they are not well received, they should shake off the dust of their feet to show their displeasure. Jesus, whom we like to think of as always friendly, nice, smiling, pleasant, does not mince words here. And if we're honest, Jesus doesn't mince words a lot of times. First of all, what's it, what exactly is going on here with this story of the 70 sent out? We're actually kind of jumping into this uh, reading midstream. Uh, we missed the one last, uh, last Sunday, and we're just kind of jumping into the story here. <laughs> If we read the previous chapter, chapter 9, we read about a similar episode where Jesus sends out the 12, the 12 apostles, under similar conditions. You know, no, take no food, no bag, no whatever. So if we're reading the narrative from start to finish, you see that this group of 70 is sort of a, a second wave of uh, missionaries after the initial first wave with the 12 apostles. Now we're accustomed to calling the, the Twelve, the Twelve Apostles, but actually when you, uh, you notice in the Gospels, usually it says just the Twelve, Jesus and the Twelve. It doesn't say Twelve Disciples or Twelve Apostles, it says the Twelve. And all of Jesus' followers, not just the Twelve, are properly called Disciples. <clears throat> but in truth, the word Apostle doesn't just apply to Jesus' inner circle of twelve, even though, though we oftentimes speak that way. The word apostle comes from a Greek word that means to send out, to send out on mission. So apostles are just those that are sent out on mission. Disciple, the word disciple, on the other hand, comes from the word for student. So really the distinction comes more from their function than office. All who learn from and follow Jesus are disciples. So that's all of us. While those sent out into the world on mission are apostles. So properly those two must overlap because one cannot possibly be an apostle without first being a disciple. Another detail worth noting here is the number. Seventy is not a random number, and almost always numbers in the Bible have symbolic meaning. They're not random. So we note that, the, looking back to the previous chapter, the first group is the Twelve Apostles. And it's widely agreed by scholars that the Twelve Apostles represent the Twelve Tribes of Israel, the Jewish nation in its fullness. So when you talk about the Twelve Tribes of Israel, that's all the Jewish people in its entirety. Seventy may not be quite as obvious, and actually I read different translations of this uh, text, and some say seventy, some say seventy-two. Uh, not really sure what's going on there, but uh, in the New Revised Standard Version, it's seventy. But it seems that this is likely to refer to the seventy nations or peoples that are named in the book of Genesis. So if the, apostle, the apostles are sent symbolically to the Jewish people, the twelve, and then the second group of apostles, the seventy, is sent out into all the world, it symbolizes the light of the gospel coming to all nations and peoples, first the Jews and then the Gentiles. Then there's this part about shaking off the dust of your feet if you are not well received. This seems harsh uh, to us uh, polite sort of Canadians, and odd, perhaps, but there's also a cultural detail we're missing that would be obvious to people reading this in the first century. A basic rule of Middle Eastern hospitality at this time would be that when you receive guests, not only do you feed them, but you wash their feet upon arrival. So the fact that your feet were dusty enough to shake off means that your feet were never washed by, by the people there. You were not received properly. <clears throat> Hospitality plays a key role in the Gospels, more so than we really realize. 
Jesus is often found eating with his followers, eating with sinners or other wrong types of people, or visiting private homes. These many and varied scenes of shared meals are not just set dressing, not extraneous detail. In the Jewish culture of the time, to eat with someone meant to intimately associate with them. And honestly, most times even today, it still means that to us. We usually don't eat with people we hate. <laughs> Not very good for the digest digestion if we do. <laughs> but due to laws regarding ritual cleanliness, eating with the quote-unquote wrong types of people could be a defiling act. So if you ate with the wrong types of people in uh, according to Jewish ritual law, you could be, become unclean. This is why Jesus sharing meals with prostitutes, tax collectors, and Samaritans was such a scandal. And when we think of these 70 missionaries being sent out, just the word missionary conjures up certain images for us, it may make us think of proselytizing. You know, knocking on doors to offer Evangelical Bible tracts, or Book of Mormon, or a copy of the Watchtower magazine, or whatever. This type of evangelism, the one that most Anglicans recoil at, and rightly so, to me that's also a big, uh, big turnoff. But this is not what Jesus instructs the 70 to do. He doesn't tell them to go distribute Bible tracts. He doesn't tell them to judge people's way of living. He doesn't tell them to teach them correct doctrine. Jesus tells them to cure the sick and tell them that the kingdom of God has come near to you. Bring a message of healing and wholeness. Now we may not all be apostles in the strict traditional sense as in having a specific calling to do that type of work all the time. But as baptized Christians, we are all commissioned, we are all sent out as to, be mission, to be emissaries of Christ in this world. This is not an easy call, of course, and it was never intended to be. Oftentimes we feel under-equipped, like we have no bag, no purse, no sandals, no supplies. I feel like sheep amongst wolves. Yes, wolves of the secular world, but not infrequently also there are wolves among those, amongst those who bear the name Christian outwardly. But if we understand our role as emissaries of Christ in the way Jesus intended, that is, not as teachers of doctrine attempting to produce new Christians as if we're trying to crank people out and fill the pews, but rather as bearers of the Christ light, bringing healing, support, and wholeness to a broken and hurting world. If that remains our focus, our core focus, then even the demons, the, the demons, I'm not talking about little things with horns, but you know, demons as embodiments of injustice, pain, grief, sadness, oppression, hate, all the demons that infect this world, all the forces which oppose the kingdom of God, all those dark forces will submit to the light, life, and love of Christ, radiating from each one of us. Amen. Now let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God and very God, begotten not made, being of one.
one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. The suffering was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall not end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism before the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, as we celebrate the birthday in Canada this weekend, we give you thanks for our country. We thank you for all those who serve us, our armed forces, firefighters, police, teachers, all those working in hospitals and care homes, and so many more. We give you thanks for all the uncelebrated among us who quiet ways, ways serve others. We ask you to bless them all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for summer weather, for the rest and relaxation for those who are on vacation or planning holidays. We pray that everyone may share time with family and friends and return refreshed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we fear for our world, filled with war and hatred. We put our hope in you, Lord. Guide those in authority in all nations to find the path to peace. Grant them wisdom to know and do what is right and just for the people and for the world. Open our eyes to see the needs of all people, wherever they may be. Fill us with compassion for all and desire, desire to do your will, that the earth may be filled with your peace and your justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you inspire us here at Christ Church and in all parishes with your Holy Spirit. And we ask you to bless parish leaders and all involved in ministry. We give you thanks for those who serve us here at Christ Church. Joel, Donna, Irene, the music team, the altar guild, the prayer team, the youth and Sunday school leaders, our outreach and pastoral caregivers, the wardens, lay readers, and the ACW. We thank you for their gifts of service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the infinite wisdom of Christ for those who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ. And we ask that you grant them the gifts of the Spirit and in particular, we pray for our leaders here in Montreal, Bishop Mary and Executive Archdeacon Robert, and all who serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our Christ Church prayer roster, we pray for Emmett and Judith, for Herbert and Sylvia, and for Frank and family. We ask that you comfort, strengthen, and heal all who are sick, in distress, or in need. And we commend to your care, Donna, Jane, Anne, Phil, Art, Lorna, Aileen, and Steve, Colleen, Janet, Gordon, and Deirdre, Anne, Gloria, Elena, Mary, and Irene. And we pray for your love and support for their caregivers and families. We pray for those who have departed this life, Phil, Violet, and Maureen, and we commend them into your care. We pray that you come.
comfort those suffering from the loss of loved ones with the love and support that comes only from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, you challenge us in so many ways. And so let us put our faith in the promise you have made to, through the prophet Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come to and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So let us call upon the Lord, opening our minds and hearts fully to his guidance as we leave here today. Hear what comfortable words our, Christ, our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Please share a sign of the peace of Christ with your neighbor or online in the comments section.
Receive our sacrifice of praise and strengthen us for the perfect freedom of your service. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet and right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in substance of our mortal flesh manifested forth his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee as we sing.
not presume to come to this thy table, O Lord, the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the problem under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant, therefore, that gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may never more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to remind you that this is not the table of the Anglican Church of Canada, nor of Christ Church of Repair. This is Christ's table. All are welcome. And also, during, uh, during communion, Karen will be in the, in the chapel to offer prayer support. If you have uh, needs for prayers of healing or other support, please uh, see Karen and she will be glad to pray with you. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you.
together we pray. We most heartily thank thee, Almighty and ever living God, that thou hast graciously feed us in these holy mysteries, the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Any birthdays this week? Anniversaries? Uh, I have an intent to or, uh, attempt to ordain. This is, we're supposed to read this in church. Uh, uh, it was issued by the bishop. This is not a local one, but we, at least once in the, in the, we should announce it again when there's an ordination on our diocese. Saturday, September 24th, uh, Bishop Ir Irwin Gibson has announced that, God willing, she will ordain uh, at 2 p.m. in Grace Church Sutton. Uh, Randy Gates to the uh, diaconate, so that's permanent deacon. So you, you can, a lot of deacons proceed on to be a priest, but some, they're also permanent deacons who are uh, called into a permanent uh, deacon ministry. We continue to need volunteers to help with Sunday worship. We have had responses, and that's good. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, readers, prayer leaders, uh, prayer ministry, uh, uh, ministers, greeters, um, sound system, and uh, PowerPoint projector, all these things are different, there are different levels of, of, uh, of skill, but the, it, everything, all these can be trained, everyone has the basic skills to be trained on these, uh, and like I said, the more people we have in the, in the rota, in the, rota the, the less often uh, each person has to do it. Um, we had several requested hymns in our service today. Morning Has Broken was from Lorna Fisher, our offertory hymn, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, from Susan Childs, and our sending song. This is something different we're going to do today. Uh, instead of our usual uh, dismissal, you know, when I'm at the back of the church and we say, we have not been to church, we are the church, all that, instead of that, we're going to do a sung dismissal. This was requested by June, uh, June uh, Cuse, and um, we're going to try this today, and maybe a, a, a few times, and see how it goes. Uh, we might do it more often if, it, if, uh, if, it, if people resonate with it. So keep those hymn requests coming. Uh, like I said, the summer is a good time because we're, in ordinary time, we don't have the same strong themes like we do in Lent or Easter or whatever. So it's a good time to get in your hymn requests. Next Sunday, uh, we'll be having, we'll be celebrating Holy Baptism, and of course every celebration of Holy Baptism is special, but uh, this is a, uh, a multi-generational celebration because uh, it will be Eldon Wilson's, uh, Eldon and Mary Wilson's uh, great-grandson that will be baptized here. So that would be a very joyful event. Any other announcements? With that, we will stand and sing our closing hymn, Lord, you give the great commission. That's common phrase 333? 433. 433, okay. It's not what's up there. <clears throat> 